Okay, this is going to be an uh, online lecture walking through an example of creating a class in Python. What we're going to do is we're going to create a fraction class, and this is inspired by content in our textbook, Python for Everyone, by Horseman in the case. So what exactly is it that we're trying to accomplish here? Well, what we want to do is we want to come up with a class that can help us to represent a rational number accurately. And here's the problem. Floating point numbers, which are the, ways, the way that we usually keep track of decimal numbers in Python, are fast, but they can be imprecise. For example, if you look at this code here, we set up a variable x and we say that we want it to be equal to 999 divided by 1000. We print that out. The variable y we then set up to be 998 divided by 1000, and we print that out. Then we create a third variable called answer, which is supposed to be what the res result that we're trying to get is, and we print that out. Then we calculate the same result, and we say z equals x minus y. Now if all goes well, and math were perfectly per precise in Python, answer and z would be exactly the same. But what is it that we actually get? We actually get a result like this, where x equals 0.999, which is what we'd expect, y is 0.998, also what we'd expect, the answer is 0.001, that's good, but z is not exactly 0.001. It actually has a small little remainder down at the um, very far decimal point that's caused because of rounding errors in the binary representations of the floating point. So the rationale for this, um, this example, this um, tutorial, is to um, try and come up with a version of a rational number representation that doesn't have that kind of precision error that floating point numbers have. So our goal is to create a new class that doesn't have this. Now our new class is going to be very accurate but it can be potentially be very, very slow. And so that's why this isn't used in uh, more production systems. So here's an example of how we would like our code to actually end up working. We would like to import our fraction class from our fraction.py file. We would like to be able to create a variable x, which rather than dividing explicitly 999 by 1000, be our, those two numbers get passed to a fraction class as the numerator and the denominator of a fraction. Then when we print it out, we want, the, we want the number to retain its fractional representation. So we will print out 999 over 1,000. Then we'll create a second fraction, y, and divide 998 by 1,000 and print that out. And then we also want this class to have the ability to do mathematical operations on it, for example, x minus y, and then print out z. So if all goes well, we'll get the output that looks like this, where the numbers are exactly right, however, they're being represented in fractional form instead of as um, decimal point numbers. So our strategy for the representation here is that once we create one of these fraction classes, we're not going to allow them to be changed. They're going to be immutable. So to create a new fraction, we can, we can take an old one and create a new one from it, but we're not going to be able to create change a fraction once it has gone through the constructor. Internally, we're not going to use a floating point representation. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to track the numerator and the denominator separately We'll reduce our fraction as much as possible on creation, and we're only going to um, we're only going to have a negative numerator if necessary. Meaning that because you can have a negative numerator and a negative denominator, if both top and bottom are negative, it actually ends up being a positive number. Or if the denominator is negative and the numerator is positive, that could be a negative number. We're going to standardize and say that the numerator is the only component that can be negative in our fraction. Okay, so the design of our constructor then is that the numerator and the denominator will only be given at the moment of construction. That's, that's aligned with the idea of it being immutable. We're going to have a special, few special cases that we need to keep track of. First of all, we need to raise an exception if there's a zero denominator, since that's not a valid fractional uh, representation of a number. And if it's a zero in the numerator, then we need to adjust our representation so that we have zero over one as sort of our canonical representation of zero. If we have a negative number, we need to make sure the representation is appropriate with a negative number in the numerator. And then finally, we want to check to make sure that our numerator and denominator are integers. And if they aren't, then we'll raise an exception. At the same time that we're making a constructor, we're going to use the special method underscore underscore REPR underscore underscore. This is a special method that's used whenever Python needs to, need to, needs to represent a class as a string. In Java, this would be to string the method, but in Python, we use this special method whenever it gets appended to a string or needs to be transformed into a string. And so in our class, what we're going to do is we're going to create a string that looks like numerator divided by denominator, like we saw in our 
um, proposed test example. So here's our test code for what we would like to have run after we do our first um, bit of coding. We'd like to import the fraction class from fractiondemo.py. We'd like to create a fraction that's 1 over 2. And we'd like to see the string representation come back as 1 over 2. That's what strx does. So that should pass. We want the fractional representation of 2 over 4 to be reduced to, lowest common, um, to the lowest common representation of 1 over 2. We'd like a fractional representation of 0 over 4 to be standardized to 0 over 1. And we'd like a negative fraction, like negative 10 over 100, to be standardized to minus 1 over 10. So that's the um, code that we want to get to pass. Let's go ahead and do some coding to get that um, to work. So I'm going to open up Spider. I've got a um, file ready to go here. This is my fraction demo. Um, I also have my test code ready to go. So here's the test code that we just looked at. And if I run this right now, it's going to fail because I don't actually have anything in my, there we go, I don't have anything in my fraction demo class. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to create the class itself. So use fraction demo and use the colon. And then we're going to define the constructor. And in our constructor, we will pass it the explicit parameter self the numerator, and the denominator. In the constructor, we're going to have a, a numerator and a denominator that we are keeping track of. But first, we're going to check to see if these are actually integers, because we're only going to allow users of our class to construct fractions with integer numerators and denominators. So we'll say if is instance, actually, we want to say if it's not an instance, numerator of int, then we're going to raise a type error. The numerator of a fraction must be an integer. Great. And then we'll do the same thing, but we'll do it with the denom denominator as well. All right, that's our special case. If um, for when the numerator and denominator are not integers. We also have a special case if the denominator is zero. And in that case, we also need to raise an exception. So we'll say if the denominator equals zero, then we will, oops, if the denominator equals zero, then we will raise a zero division, division error. Okay, that's our second case. Make sure that clears okay. There we go. All right, and then our third case, special case, is if we get a zero, so the um, sort of a parallel to the denominator is zero. If the numerator is zero, then we wanna set um, the instance variable numerator equal to zero, and we wanna set the denominator equal to one. That's our standard representation for zero in this class, just by design. Okay, um, otherwise, uh, we need to do a few things. We need to um, check to see what the sign of our number is. So we need to check to see if the numerator is less than zero and the denominator is greater than or equal to zero, then that's a negative number. Or if the numerator is greater than or equal to zero, and the denominator is less than zero. In that case, then we will be working with oops, a sign of minus one, else we'll have a sign of one. That's too much, too much indentation here. Let's see if I fix that. Okay, um, and now what we need to do is we need to um, reduce our fraction to lowest form. And so I'm going to create a helper function for this, and we'll call it, well, it's going to be a private helper function, so I'm going to start it with an underscore, and I'm just going to call it reduce. And I'm going to pass it the numerator, and I'm going to pass it the denominator. And this is going to return a tuple. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to use an algorithm that uh, loops through and reduces the numbers to lowest common form. 
All right, so first we'll say a is going to be equal to the absolute value of the numerator, and b is going to be equal to the absolute value of the denominator. And then we're going to use the modulo um, operation, and we're going to say, well, a mod b is not equal to 0. We'll say a temporary a equals a, and a temporary b equals b. And then we'll say a equals temp b, and b equals temp a mod temp b. And then after we go through that loop several times, reducing each of the forms, each of the numerator and the denominator, we're going to say that um, the mm, we're going to end up returning two values. So we'll say um, we'll say return n numerator is going to equal to the absolute value of n divided by b times the sign. And the return value of the denominator is going to be equal to the absolute value of the denominator divided by b. Good. And then we will return the numerator and the denominator as a tuple. So down here, after we're done with our checking the sign here, we are going to pass, actually we'll pass on the sign as well. We will say that the tuple of this dot underscore numerator, so two instance variables in our class, this dot underscore denominator is going to equal to the call to self dot underscore reduce the proposed numerator, denominator, and sign. Okay, so in our, first, in our first instance, if it doesn't pass, then we are going to raise an exception. In the second check here, we'll raise an exception. In the third case, we'll raise an exception. If this is true, then numerator and denominator get set. Otherwise, numerator and denominator get set here. And for some reason, I've got, oh, let's say sine equals minus one, sine equals one. Okay, so that should be enough in order to create our constructor, let me just see what our warnings are here. Oh, sorry, I'm using, I'm using this instead of self. That's my Java coming through. There we go. Great. All right, and then the other thing we need to do is we need to create a string representation of our, of our fraction. So we're going to say, um, define the repr function with self, and we're just going to return a string which consists of self.numerator, self.underscore numerator, plus the division sign, plus self.underscore denominator. All right, if we save that and we run our test, we have a problem. We try and import fraction from fraction demo. What do we get? Okay, let's change our class to fraction. There we go. Go back to our test. We run it. We get reduce takes three positional arguments, but four were taken. We must have have, have an error here. Reduce takes numerator, denominator, and sign. And reduce here, we need to sit, pass it self dot numerator, denominator, and sign. Save that. Debug. Must be string and not integer. Let's see. Convert these explicitly to strings. Get rid of this initial string cast. Save that. Run it. There we go. And so we got four passes on that initial um, chunk through our code. That's great. Okay, so that was working through the constructor and getting the um, string representation done. So what's the next thing that we need to do in order to get this fraction class to work? The next thing that we want to do is we want to allow ourselves to be able to do comparisons with our fraction class. We'd like to be able to use the double equals, the not equals, the less than, the less than or equals, the greater than, and the greater than or equals. 
And the way we're going to do this is we're going to leverage some um, just knowledge of fractions. So for something to be equal, given that our two fractions are already reduced, means the numerators are going to have to be equal and the denominators are going to have to be equal. That one's kind of easy. But for the less than or the greater than, we'll, we'll all base them off of the less than. And what we can do is we can say that any relationship between a fraction A over B and C over D is that same re re relationship given that we've um, multiplied by D and multiplied D on the left and multiplied by B on the right. So we're going to start with the less than and use that relationship in order to um, be able to compare it. So the test code that we have in this case that we want to be able to pass is here. We're going to import our fraction, same fraction that we had before, but now we're going to augment it. We're going to create three fractions, x, y, and z, one-half, two-fourths, which should be reduced to one-half, and minus three-quarters. And we would like x to be equal to y, x to not be equal to z, z to be less than y, x to be less than or equal to y, y to be greater than z, and x to be greater than or equal to z. So if all those things pass, it's a good indication that we've done some decent coding. So let's go ahead and implement these. Let's go back to our code. And let's see, let's start with the equals function. Let's go into our fraction demo. And we'll come down here and we're going to add some code down here to do, define double equals. So double equals is the special um, symbol underscore underscore eq underscore underscore. Just like any method, we, our first parameter is the self. And the second parameter in an equal sign is in the equals comparison is the right hand side expression that's going to be passed into the equals. And just to make this clear, I'm going to go ahead and create a left hand side variable that's equal to self. So what this is equivalent to is this is equivalent to asking um, is left hand side equal to right hand side. So how are we going to be able to figure that out? Well, we have to check two things. We have to ask if the left hand side dot underscore numerator. Um, but you know what? I actually don't like using the private variables directly. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create um, an accessor so that we can get access to these private, otherwise private variables. Because the right hand side um, is a parameter that's being passed in, and we shouldn't be accessing the private variables of the private instance data of a variable that's being passed in. So first, let's um, create some accessors for our class here. We'll define get numerator. And that will just return self dot underscore numerator. And we'll define get denominator. And that will return underscore denominator. Okay, I'm waiting for that warning to clear. Unindent, oh, I didn't indent correctly. That's why the warning is there. Good. Okay. All right, so first we're going to ask is the left hand side that get numerator equal to the right hand side, double equal, right hand side that get numerator. Now, this is just asking if the fractional component is equal. And if that is true, and so if the numerator of the left hand side is equal to the numerator on the right hand side, and the numerator on the denominator on the left hand side is equal to the denominator on the right hand side. In that case, we will return true, and else we will return false. Now, this is um, we don't actually need to do have this if statement there. We can eliminate this and just simply say return the result of that equation there. All right, so that should be sufficient to check whether or not something's equal. Um, so checking whether or not let's make sure why, why isn't this clearing? Or because we have a colon at the end. Okay. So now if something's not equal, that's easy to define in terms of equality. We just say that something is not equal to a right-hand side, and we'll do the same thing. We'll say left-hand side equals self. We're just going to return if not left-hand side equal the right-hand side. And so this is going to cause this fraction to be compared to this fraction, 
So this is going to cause this code to be run here on line 53, and if it comes back equal, then we'll just negate the sense of it. And so that's equal, and that's not equal. So now let's use the, now let's calculate the less than component as well. And we'll use that mathematical equation in order to calculate less, less than. The special method is underscore, underscore, less than, underscore, underscore, with self, and then the right-hand side. And we'll again say that the left-hand side equals self, so that we can just see what's happening in the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to return if the left-hand side dot get numerator times the right-hand side dot get denominator is less than the left hand side dot get denominator times the right hand side dot get numerator. Now this is just that function that we had on our slide deck with the circle and the plus in the middle of it. That will determine whether or not the left hand side is less than the right hand side. So we're going to do a little trick here and we're now going to define less than or equal of self times the right hand side. And the trick is, let's get the left hand side here, is we're going to leverage that function that we just created, the less than symbol, and we're going to notice that the left hand side is less than or equal to the right hand side if the right hand side is less than the left hand side. So we switched the order left and right, but what we did is we enabled the use of the less than symbol to answer this question, and then that gets answered by line 61, that function there. So that's a tricky way of doing less than or equal. We can do a similar thing with greater than. We know that the left-hand side is greater than the right-hand side if the right-hand side is less than the left-hand side. So we can define greater than self.righthand side by just saying, and the left hand side equals self. And just return the right hand side is less than the left hand side. Actually, the right hand side, the left hand side is greater than if the right hand side is less than or equal, right? And here, do we have to change this? We have to say if the left-hand side, what we want to ask is the left-hand side less than or equal to the right-hand side. That's is the right-hand side. So saying that the left-hand side is less than or equal to the right-hand side is saying not the left-hand side is greater than the right-hand side. Just simply saying not the right-hand side is less than the right-hand side little error there in the less than or equal. Okay, and then the last one we have to do is we have to define greater than or equal self that right hand side. And again, we're going to try and figure out a way that we can leverage the other things that we've already defined so we don't have to um, do anything complicated. And we know that greater than or equal, we're asking is the left hand side greater than or equal to the right hand side. And that's the same thing as saying not left-hand side less than right-hand side, which is the same as saying return the right-hand side is greater than the left-hand side, which is what we just defined above. Not, not that. Okay, I think that's everything we need for the comparison. So if we save it, and go back to our fractional test, our second test, that's our first test. Let's try and run it and see what we get. Okay, so let's see, we got some, something went wrong here in our code. Let's see if we can figure out what it is. In fraction demo line 63, we have an error in our multiplication, unsupported operand type for plot time. So let's see what we have here. Okay, so let's see if we can isolate these out a little bit by putting in a few. Uh, there we go. I had forgotten to put in my call to my function there. Save that. Go back to our test and run that. 
Okay, I've got a similar problem here somewhere. It says fraction demo import this, invalid syntax, get numerator. Perhaps I called it the wrong thing. Let's see. Get numerator, get numerator, get denominator. Let's see. Extra parenthesis there, that's probably the error. Save that, come back and run. There we go, pass, 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 pass. So great. That gave us the ability to do a constructor, to do a string representation, and then to do basic binary comparisons. The last thing that we need to add is the ability to do arithmetic with our um, fractions. So for arithmetic, we wanna do plus, minus, times, and divide. And so that's going to require us, if we want to use the symbolic notation with the plus symbol, the minus symbol, the asterisk, and the slash, we're going to need to implement underscore, underscore, add, underscore, underscore, sub, underscore, underscore, multiply, and underscore, underscore, true division. And the basic idea here is recognizing that although normally in order to add a fraction or subtract a fraction, we need a common denominator, we can go ahead and create that common denominator by multiplying through the denominators on both sides, adding the numerator and then reducing the fraction. What we're going to do in this case is we're going to create the, we're going to do that calculation and return a new fraction um, rather than changing the one that, ones that we've got. So our test code is going to look like this. So first of all, on the left, we have an attempt at trying to make a fraction with a floating point numerator and denominator. And we're going to, hopefully that's going to, if everything goes well, that's going to cause an exception. If it doesn't cause an exception, then we'll continue and we'll print fail. But if it does cause an exception, then it will pass into the exception block and we'll say pass. Not that throwing an exception is good, but it's what we expect in this case. Then down the middle column, we're creating two fractions, 999 over 1,000 and 998 over 1,000. Our answer is 1 over 1,000. We're going to do the we're going to do the arithmetic of x minus y to get z. We're going to check to see whether z is equal to the answer. If that's true, then we're leveraging our equality function and our minus function so that that should work out great. And then we'll check our string representation to make sure that it's 1 over 1,000. Then we're going to calculate a new answer, which is a fraction of 1997 over 1,000, which is what we should get if we add x plus y. We'll do the same thing. We'll check if z equals answer, and if so, we'll pass. And then we'll check the string representation to see if that works. Then finally, in the third column, we'll create a fraction 1 over 2 and 2 over 3, We'll calculate the answer of multiplying those two together, which should be 2 over 6 or 1 third once it's been reduced. And we'll check that answer to see if z equals answer. And then check our string representation to see if it equals 1 over 3. And finally, we'll do a division where we take one fraction, 300 times 511, 300 511 divided by 1 half. And if all goes well, we should get 600 511 and we'll check those answers as well. All right, so to do that coding, we're going to need to implement the add method and the multiply method along the way. All right, so let's see if um, we can pull that off. All right, so let's switch to our code and go to our fraction demo class, and we'll implement our addition function. That's add, and again, we have self and the right-hand side. We'll create our left-hand side of our equation that is going to be equivalent to self, so we can just work with left-hand side and right-hand side so we can see what we're doing. We'll see that our numerator, our new numerator, is going to be equal to the left hand side dot get numerator. This is our um, equation that we just went through, times the right hand side dot get denominator. Great. And we're adding. Um, so that's going to be taking that component and we are going to add that in the denominator with switching the two, left-hand side and right-hand side. So that's multiplying through on that, that bit. And then the new denominator is going to be equal to the left-hand side get denominator times the right-hand side dot get, right-hand side dot get denominator. And then we're gonna return a new fraction a uh, new fraction made from the number and the numerator and the denominator of those two. Subtraction should be similarly easy. We should be able to take that and duplicate it. And instead of doing the plus, we'll do the minus right there. And we need to use the correct name for that special function. Multiplication is also pretty easy.
we just implement the multiplication. And in this case, all we do is say the new numerator is going to be the left-hand side, um, get numerator times the right-hand side, get numerator. And the denominator is going to be the left-hand side, get denominator times the right-hand side, get denominator. We'll create a new fraction out of those. And then that's going to end up being our, um, that's, that'll be reduced when it, in the constructor. And then finally, we'll do true division. And true division is just one fraction divided by another is one fraction times the reciprocal of the other. So we'll just change this to get denominator and this to get numerator. And that should work out. So we'll save that. Take a look at our test code here. So here's the test code that we just showed. And we'll go ahead and run it and see what happens. And boom, it all passed, sort of amazingly. Pretty, pretty good. I can't believe that passed without any bugs. That's, that's a good coding, good coding session. All right. So in summary, what we just did is we created a fraction class. We created a fraction class that when you create a fraction with a constructor, it retains the um, underlying relationship between the numerator and the denominator and doesn't approximate it with a floating point. We enabled ourselves to be able to do comparisons on those with the different binary comparison operators and then basic arithmetic operations. So we have a very precise rational number class now that we can use in our calculations. The only thing about it is the, re the process of reducing a fraction to lowest terms can take a long time depending on how large your fractions are. And so this is possibly one of the reasons why it's not used in practice. But it's a great example of learning to use the special methods and thinking outside the box about how you can create new classes of objects that are supported by the traditional mathematical operations using the symbols. Thanks for your attention.